You at, hey, come here. You asked me about silhouettes. Come here, check this out. Come here, check this out, dude, seriously. This is awesome. Come here, look at this. Get out your iPhone. This is totally cool. Now, come here. Yeah. Now, now look at the way. Here's how I'm seeing it, because uh -huh. I kind of like this log in the foreground. My exposure is such that I'm... And these kids them. had never met one another before. There's 18 of them. They loaded them up on the school bus from the two schools. So you had the dynamic of these junior high kids meeting one another for the first time, which, of course, creates a unique dynamic. But they showed up that first day. We put them in a horseshoe out at Singing Bird Nature Center, and I started talking to them about photography. Uh, Quad City Arts provided a copy of my book to every single one of those kids. Wow. So it's like the textbook wow, wow. for them. So they all got a copy of my book. And we sat down and we just started to have this very constructive conversation about creativity and about photography as an art medium and about the amazing tool they all have in their pocket, whether it's an Android phone or an iPhone. Now here's the thing, it's only ones and zeros. So moving even a little closer, just, just a little closer. I want to keep gave that us really uh, dark. Uh, Apple iPhone C, the colored ones. But so we have we have like twenty of these. We keep them charged up, and we put one in the hands of each kid. Then we go out, we start making pictures. The end of the end of the day, we download all the pictures. But uh, so it was this level playing field. All these kids, everybody had access to the same technology, and to teach these kids grassroots fundamentals of composition and. Uh, go from there and then to, to go out in the woods every day wandering around with these kids uh, teaching them how to make pictures. These, these four intersections are really key places the way our eye sees the world but this would be a good place with two-thirds sky and one-third foreground or two-thirds foreground and one-third sky so ideally for me the place... Yeah well that tree came about as a result of some adversity in my life um, a bad accident and then uh, some amazing inspiration from three people in my life that steered me down road I never could have imagined. Um, that and probably the most monumental occurrence was buying an iPhone. <laughs> Who would have imagined? Mm -hmm. My friend Corey Peplin, Jack, the day I got the iPhone, her message to me was, isn't the camera great? I'm like, I didn't buy a camera. I bought a cell phone. Mm -hmm. But I discovered that I actually bought a camera and I uh, embarked on this crazy adventure um, I was needing some inspiration in my life. Um, um, the adversity was a, a serious car accident. I wasn't making pictures. I'm driving down the highway in Watertown, South Dakota, and the last thing I remember is the song that was playing on the radio. It's Victim of Love by the Eagles. You guys probably don't even know who that band is. But last thing I remember is there's a van or a truck in front of me, and this is one of those challenging lessons I learned, kids. Challenges will occur in our lives. Things we do not anticipate are going to occur, and it's how we respond to these situations that will define who we are. Now, you see I'm in front of you today, so you know that I'm fine, but I had a terrible situation. All as photojournalists put pressure on ourselves on a daily basis, but with the tree project and the way this has evolved, that it's, it's kind of taken over my life and to evolve into an opportunity for me at 55 to land an artist in residency where I'm able to go in and try and inspire kids or, or try and inspire school teachers or, or whatever it may be. I mean, it's, it's a much quieter challenge, but to still escape to the valley of that tree and really slow down, I just go there and it's this quiet contemplative experience. I've learned to slow down. And I, the message I tell the kids is, uh, you've got to let yourself it's a see. Perspective I use all the time, and it's another perspective. People would drive by and they would see me doing this, and again, they thought I was weird. They thought I was crazy. But I call it a mouse's perspective. It is one of my absolute favorite perspectives. If you look through the pictures in my book, you will see that Mr. Hirsch, 53 years old, was laying in the mud. He was laying in the snow. He was out there. With oh, I think it's important because art is an underappreciated skill set. It's a uh, an underappreciated uh, outlet. Um, it's very personal, um, and and for me, I mean, for me, like I, the message I try to tell these kids, you know, if you ever wanted to write, write. If you ever wanted to draw, draw. If you ever wanted to paint, paint. If you ever wanted to be a photographer, be a photographer. Um, do it because it's personally rewarding. That's cool. That's weird. Man. 
whole process has been kind of an epiphany because I'm not trained as a teacher, and I'm talking to such a broad range of kids. The demographic is amazing age-wise, and uh, those kids I spoke to yesterday at Eugene Field, the fifth and sixth graders, my realization is they are the perfect age for somebody to present to where they are. They're not jaded by by adolescents um their their intellect is evolved to a point where they're a very engaged audience and uh they were really fun to talk to and they were very responsive and but uh, yeah i don't know man it's I, I i can't imagine that that the opportunities that i'm getting because i did something that came about because of all these crazy adversities in my life um uh i wouldn't change a thing Look, at this. we've got this void of all this nothingness, and you've got that great placement of this amazing living thing amongst all that chaos. Nice. Thank you. You're very welcome.